While the Hawker Hurricane was still in development, Sydney Cam had been giving thought to a bigger aircraft powered by a much larger and more powerful engine. So, before Hurricane production even began, he got to work on two prototypes, basing them around two engines he was debating between. The first preliminary design was set up to use the Napier Sabre, while the other was planned to use the Rolls-Royce Vulture, the prototypes being named after the engine's designers, hence N and R respectively. Both of these engines produced upwards of 2,000 horsepower and had 24 cylinders in total, but were different in their layouts, with the Sabre being an H-block design and the Vulture an X-block. While these designs were being drawn up in the background to the hurricane's adoption, the Air Ministry would release a request for an aircraft capable of 400 miles per hour and a ludicrous armament of 12 303 machine guns, along with a two-speed supercharger for high-altitude performance. Cam and his team would then take their backburner idea and put it into formal development, with a prototype being ordered for construction, as their idea practically lined up perfectly with what the Air Ministry wanted. Following in tradition with Hawker's naming scheme of using storms, the new aircraft would be christened the Typhoon. When being developed, Cam would opt for a thick pseudo-inverted gull wing to allow for strong construction and heavy armament. Cam was fully aware that the 303s were not sufficient for modern aerial combat and had hoped for an array of Hispano autocannons, but his hands were tied by the Air Ministry's specifications for specifically 12 303s, as they were of the belief that low-caliber MGs were still sufficient for single-engine fighters. It would take until after the Battle of Britain for them to change their minds and more widely adopt the 20mm Hispano. The Typhoon prototype would make its maiden flight in early 1940, and immediately became a problem child with a seemingly endless list of issues. From carbon monoxide seeping into the cockpit from the engine, to tails shearing off in high-speed dives, to terrible visibility out of the initial canopy design, the Typhoon had a lot of problems that made pilots initially distrustful of the aircraft. More so when a prototype was lost in a low-level speed test, killing the pilot and stumping Cam as to the cause. It would take until 1942 for the Typhoon to mature enough to be accepted widely into service, with many revisions having to be made to the aircraft. The canopy was changed, the armament switched out for autocannons like Cam wanted initially, and modifications made to the propeller, switching it out for a Ford Blade design later on. Its first combat debut would prove that the Typhoon had potential despite its earlier frustrations. It would begin by performing low-level intercepts over the channel during 1942 and 1943, when Germany was attempting to sneak bombers in under the chain home early warning radar system. All this did, however, was make them target practice for Typhoons, who, with high speed and stable flight characteristics, could take their time to line up an attack run, and then descend upon them to give them a personal symphony directed by Hispano, which, upon hearing, would cause the intruding bombers to often simply explode into a great display of fire and shattered wing spars. However, with the fighter role thoroughly fulfilled by the Spitfire, the RAF saw it fit to transition the Typhoon into a ground attack platform, rather than have it around as another thoroughbred fighter. Ironically, the same characteristics as before would make it perfect for this role, as its high speed meant it could penetrate deep into enemy territory and accurately deliver its heavy ordnance thanks to its reinforced wings and stable flight characteristics. It would be in this role that the Typhoon performed when D-Day arrived, giving close air support to invading Allied forces and becoming an ill omen for many German tank commanders, who after the war spoke of the Typhoon in fear. Typhoons would fly for the remaining duration of the war in a ground attack role, though did continue to remind German fighters that it indeed still was a fighter at heart, scoring the odd victory here and there during its strikes. With the war's end, however, the Typhoon was quickly retired, with a total of 3,300 examples being constructed over its four-year lifespan. Sadly, only one original example of a Typhoon exists today, with a few other partial airframes and replicas in various parts of Canada and the UK, with one notable replica on display in Normandy. As Britain was the only user of the Typhoon, with the type never being exported to even the Commonwealth aside from their brief use by New Zealand and Canadian pilots in D-Day, restoring a Typhoon in this day and age is incredibly difficult due to a lack of spare parts, especially since the Typhoon, much like the Hurricane, was immediately discarded at war's end. Wait a minute though, I hear you ask. What is this then? This looks like a Typhoon, but with Pakistani markings and a radial engine. That is the Hawker Tempest, specifically the one powered by a Bristol Centaurus. See, Sidney Cam knew that the Typhoon could be a great fighter, and had gone about trying to develop a better, more evolved version of it in early 1941. And you can learn more about it in the Tempest's episode, which will be uploaded alongside this one to split these two episodes up so they play better with the algorithm. <laughs>